Good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to all of you who are joining us from across the globe. And welcome to Kemat Hope session on Sri Lanka's biodiversity in the global context. I won Wanakam Bamaketcha Konmai as we treat here in Tema Collection. Tema Talks is an initiative of Tema Collection, which aims to provide a platform for experts and participants to discuss sustainability related topics and share their knowledge and experiences. In addition, we focus on creating a platform for collaboration and partnership among different stakeholders to address sustainability challenges and to achieve common goals. Today's session of Thema Talks is on Sri Lanka's biodiversity in the global context, which focuses in exploring the biodiversity of Sri Lanka and its importance, threats, and measures taken to protect the biodiversity. So moving on to our speakers of today, our main speaker today is, um, the, our first speaker for the day is Ashan Karanananda, Senior Manager, Sustainability and Product Development, also the person who's always behind Thema Talks, supporting us to make this event a success. Ashan, over to you to start today's discussion. Uh, thank you very much, Jaini, and uh, sorry for the uh, technical difficulty we had uh, for the uh, previous uh, Mentimeter questions. So we'll start off uh, with a small introduction to the session. So uh, am I audible, Jain? Yes, Ashan, you're clear. Yeah. All good. So uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for everybody who joined today's session and uh, who has been joining our, our sessions throughout. So as you know, uh, we initiated this Thema Talks actually two months ago from April onwards, and today we have the third session. So the main initiative of Thema Talks was, give me a second. So we have had, uh, Actually, uh, three, this is our third session. And initially we had uh, one session starting off with the Thema Talk session on partnerships for sustainability, where we focused on how partnerships have evolved and how we could partner in doing projects in a successful way. And also then we had the second session where we focused on the driving the green uh, building revolution. How can, and also where there are success stories shared on our project at Galloway. So what made us start Thema Talks is one, for the knowledge sharing. So this is a platform where we always share our knowledge, where others could also get in and pitch in and share their knowledge with us as well. And also the other main thing is the sharing of success stories. For example, if you take our previous session, again, we had the uh, the green building revolution concept and already in Thema collection, we have a, a property, the wild damp in Galloya, where we have uh, got the wild, uh, so the platinum award for it, so that it would share our story with others who would like to learn and start similar things. So again, then again, today is our third session and it's uh, of mainly of the uh, Sri Lanka's biodiversity in a global context. And here, what is uh, important, as you know, Sri Lanka is a uh, biodiversity rich nation, and equally there are threats. So, our speaker, Medisha Gunavardhana, uh, is the consultant of Thema Collection, and we will be sharing a detailed presentation on the session. So, before moving on to that, I'll just give a brief introduction on the biodiversity and some of the work that we do. Similar to Thema Talks, where we have another initiative, the very initiative where we support students in conducting research. So, for starting off, so I'm I'm also like uh, like a photographer, and again I'm a student of uh, Mr. Medisha. So, uh, like it was a good uh, like because of him I came to this uh, what do you call the biodiversity field, and uh, some of the photographs I'll just share on the what do you call the. Uh, biodiversity of Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka, as you know, Sri Lanka has Sri Lanka is one of the 36 biodiversity hotspots in the world. If you take uh, a biodiversity hotspot, is a place where there's a rich biodiversity as well as there are threats. 
So if you take Sri Lanka have different ecosystems, this is a photograph of mangrove ecosystems in the COVID area. And if you take the coastal belt, Sri Lanka has a 1,340 kilometer coastal belt around the country. So it supports a rich diversity. And if you take Sri Lanka is a home for more than 500 birds, out of which uh, 34 are endemic to the country. Uh, this photograph was taken in the Dikko Vita Lagoon, uh, swarm of uh, sportbill pelicans. And also, if you take butterflies, Sri Lanka is a home for 248 species of butterflies, out of which 32 are endemic to the country. And if you take the snakes, Sri Lanka is a home for more than 100 snakes. But if you see the challenges, people misunderstand the venomous, they misunderstand the think they are venomous and they are being killed, and there's a huge problem. And Sri Lanka is over home to over 100 species of frogs. And again, the lizards, these photographs were taken in one of our own property, Alia Resort and Spa. And also Sri Lanka is over home to over 100 species of dragonflies. And then Sri Lanka is a biodiversity hotspot, but and so that means there is a huge threat from the environment, from especially from the anthropogenic activities that we cause. So as you can see this photograph, if you see in the far corner, it's a Yugadamai power plant. Again, uh, there is pollution from it, and which could cause a huge threat to the biodiversity. And on the other hand, if you say this, this is a mangrove ecosystem, in between the mangrove ecosystems are getting stressed. The, due to the spread of invasive species. So there's a challenge. And if you take more anthropology like this, one of the thing is the uh, pollution due to plastic. If you take the coastal areas, the beaches, and the environment, again, there is plastic pollution, which is a huge threat to the biodiversity in the country. And then again, if you see this, this photograph was taken in Trincomalee, overgrazing of livestock. So this is a mangrove restoration site, but due to this livestock, the mangroves are not available to grow because of the livestock as they move and feed on them. It's a challenge. And again, this photograph is taken in Min area where the spread of invasive species, uh, agada, ag it's called agada, where it grows on the tank of the Min area where the elephants feed on the grass. But unfortunately, uh, because of this, there's a spread and there was a challenge. Actually, this post photograph was taken in 2019. And again, the bycatch overfishing is also a challenge. In other than that, due to human activities, we have other threats as well, where we include uh, forest deforestation and other impacts encroachment, which are creating a huge threat to biodiversity. So we, as Thema Collection, we needed to take an initiative as a concept from our chairman, Mr. Chandra Vikramasinghe. We initiated uh, biodiversity Education Research Initiative in 2000, back in 2000, 2019, uh, with the direct, uh, with, uh, even Ms. Medisha consultant, is uh, also involved in it. And so we actually looked into main three pillars on how we could uh, support the local students, local and international students in conducting more research in the biodiversity aspects of Sri Lanka. For example, climate change is also making an impact for the biodiversity. So there's a data deficiency. So to get bridge this gap, we have supported students in the local universities to conduct research, especially focusing on our resource where, for example, our resource around the country to start off. And the other pillar that we are really uh, concentrating is on awareness creation and capacity building. So if you, if you are looking to the awareness creation aspect, like there are different fora where we could present. The research findings could be presented on research symposiums, as well as this message should be taken to the general public in an understandable manner. So for a person in the local community, reading a research paper won't be helpful, but we like do capacity building programs and awareness programs at our resource with this data to show the importance of the protection and how this from through protection, how the, in, uh, the income, how the people could in, generate income through nature-based tourism. And also another area is collaboration. So we always focus on collaborating with other organizations to 
share this knowledge, not only in the biodiversity aspect as well as sustainability aspects as well, so that we could take this message not only to Sri Lanka but across the globe. So, so for today's session, uh, always uh, like Ms. Medisha will be giving a detailed presentation on all the work and the research findings that we have done. Always, if you would like to collaborate, especially if you would like to share your success stories as we have created this Thema Collection platform, Thema Talks platform for you to share your knowledge and also especially success stories. For example, if you have a, success, a successful story, a model which you have already created, if you are willing to present it to the public, always you could uh, send us an email. We could uh, take it from there and always uh, follow us on our social media channels, which is Sustainability at Thema, and the very initiative where we put regular updates on our work and also uh, how you could collaborate. So uh, thank you very much, Jaini, once again. And also thank you very much for everybody for joining the session. Uh, and if you have uh, any questions regarding the program, we could have at the end in the Q&A session. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Ashan, and thank you again from Thema Collection for this initiative of starting Thema Talks and all the sustainability projects you have put across and making Thema Collection shine in the sustainability topic. Thank you once again, Ashan. Moving to our main speaker for today, Mr. Medish Gunavardhana, the Environmental and Sustainability Consultant for Thema Collection and Consultant to the Board of Directors, Barry. Medish, over to you. Uh, thank you, Jayani, and thank you, Ashan. Uh, always delighted to see uh, this type of uh, initiatives coming up. Really great. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, am I audible to you all? Am I clear? Yes, clear. Oh, okay. good. Okay. Uh, let me share the screen. Uh, I have shared the screen. Is it visible? Yes, the screen is visible okay. to us. Okay, thank you. So, uh, as I said, uh, the Thema Collection, Sustainability at Thema, and our new initiative, the Berry. So, always we are coming up with uh, new initiatives uh, where people can uh, look at what we do and also uh, they can take us as an example model. Uh, to collaborate. So what we want to uh, share here is uh, what we have done and how you can connect with us, collaborate with us, and what you also can do. Okay, so here today in my presentation, I'm mainly going through the topic that is uh, given to me, Sri Lanka's biodiversity in a global context. So uh, this is the overview of my presentation today, uh, the talk today. So first, uh, I hope that this audience is not a, uh, a specialized audience for environment or biodiversity. So I thought of explaining you what is biodiversity meant. Okay, so I know that all of you know what is biodiversity, but I want you to give some insight about that furthermore. And then how the Sri Lanka's biodiversity will play a role in the global context. So under that, uh, our, my main talk will run away. And then at last, I want to share you uh, the work that we do. Uh, Ashan explained a few, uh, but uh, they are uh, Further beyond that, I will go through some I will find some of our findings and our outcomes. Okay, so uh, this is the overview of uh, the talk today. Uh, I will move on to the first slide and uh, the other thing. So uh, the, in this presentation, all the photographs in this presentation are the photos captured by myself within the Thema properties. Okay, so uh, we have many Thema properties and all of them are rich in biodiversity and we are well uh, like uh, committed to protect this biodiversity. And uh, all these photographs that I share today in this presentation are captured in or around Thema Collection properties. So uh, first I will move on to what is biodiversity, okay? So the biodiversity is a word that is made out of two words, biological diversity. So uh, this biological diversity about biological men started coming up in 1960s, uh, because then only people realized that the biodiversity is important and then uh, there's something uh, happening to biodiversity and uh, we have to be very much concerned about that. And then uh, in 1980s, so they, since we are using this word uh, very frequently, they came up with one word called biodiversity, 
which may uh, connect into these uh, these two words biodiversity so as this name implies as this name the word uh, tells you it is about biological diversity so biological or bio means the living things the diversity means the variation so simply it is the variation among all the living things so that's a simple uh, different simple uh, idea of biodiversity so that is the variety or the variability of life on earth and when it comes to this life on earth the variety or variability among these life forms uh, we have different uh, levels of that different components of living from uh, biodiversity so mainly we all know what are species so mainly we have a species diversity that means from one species to another we know that they, that they are different so that is one level of biodiversity the species diversity but there are two more uh, below species level and beyond the species level and even within the species each and every individual there is a difference there is a variation so this happens due to the variation among the genetic structure the genetic makeup of each individual so even within the individuals of a species there is a variation so that is what we call as genetic diversity and these species make communities and then these communities all together with the non living component we make the ecosystem so that is called a, an ecosystem ecosystem we have living component and the non living component this is what uh, i wanted to stress out because when we consider biodiversity it has non living component as well okay all the ecosystems they are uh, the biotic component is a living component abiotic component which is a non living component and the interaction so the protecting all these non living resources the soil we have the water we have the sun uh, light that we get and properties are very important to protect our this living component our biodiversity because all these non living components determines what type of condition that will exist to the survival of species depending on the uh, abiotic components the living component will be determined most of the time so therefore uh, these other components non living components also play a very important role in terms of this biodiversity so in overall uh, the biodiversity variety of life on earth and the essential interdependencies of these all the living things so these living component cannot live uh, alone they always will have to connect with uh, other living components and they are well as the non living components so all these interdependencies also we have to consider when it comes to uh, the biodiversity so therefore when we consider about protecting biodiversity we have to consider not only the species there are a lot more things to consider just protecting animal is not enough if there is no habitat for them to live if there is no ecosystem for them to thrive so that is the message that i wanted to give you with the definition of biodiversity so i move on to our topic the uh, sri lanka's biodiversity in a global context so when we take the sri lanka's biodiversity how it uh, connect to the global context so the global biodiversity is basically represented by the or the defined by the species that are shared with all the countries also a species that is only present in a certain country okay so that means the global the species that is in sri lanka represents the uh, global biodiversity and from that there are some species that is only found in sri lanka which is endemic to sri lanka so that has an important role when it comes to the global context because if this species go extinct from sri lanka that means it will be uh, gone from the entire world okay so that's how we represent the global biodiversity as a island so when it comes to the global representation of biodiversity uh, we have species that are shared by other countries but still they are representing the global biodiversity and we have another important component which is only endemic to us which is representing the global biodiversity okay so therefore the endemics play a greater role and uh, when we consider the biodiversity of sri lanka and the endemism about sri lanka it is really high so i am uh, not going to repeat the figures and again because uh, ashan went through some of the numbers uh, the species number of species that we have in sri lanka and the percentage or the number of endemic species that we have i will go only through the importance of these two not the figures because i don't want to repeat it 
So when we consider Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is island. So we, we are not connected with other countries. It's island. So we are disconnected. But still, Sri Lanka has a very rich uh, biodiversity. And it is considered to be one of the richest country in the Asian region when it comes to the species concentration. Because we have very small area, but within that small area, because of the variation in the ecology, climate, soil, and also the altitudinal variation, the topography, uh, there are many different types of abiotic factors. Okay, so these abiotic factors has uh, like helped to survive many types of species. So therefore, we have we just within this small area, uh, we have a, a very high wealth of biological diversity, very high number of different species. So that's, and uh, these are some of the important numbers. So you can see we have uh, 250 lion snails and more than 200 butterflies and uh, 200, uh, more than 200 bird species. This is only the number of uh, resident birds. We have more than 200 birds of migratory species as well. So altogether, uh, nearly 500 species, more than 500 species of birds. Likewise, uh, we have high, very high number of species in each taxon in uh, different types of animal and plant groups. And then when it comes to the uh, biodiversity that uh, we represent, uh, not on numbers, we have high uh, percentage of endemic species to Sri Lanka. So that means from this, all these high numbers we have, most of them are only in Sri Lanka, nowhere else in the world. So that means we are contributing, we have high contribution to the global biodiversity. For example, uh, one like one part of the uh, angiosperms, which means the flowering plants, uh, there are more than 3,000 from that, uh, more than 25% are endemic to Sri Lanka. And then if, when we take the indigenous vertebrates that we have, Again, more than 40% are uh, endemic to Sri Lanka, uh, uh, excluding the uh, marine forms. And then, uh, as I said, we have very small area of land. And with that, we have a uh, like coastline of more than uh, 500 meters. So therefore, we have, a, again, uh, the different types of ecosystems from mountain uh, cloud for us to the coastal mangrove forests and uh, sea grass beds. So there are some, uh, like very high range of different types of ecosystems which supports many types of species but disconnected from the mainland. So high amounts of endemisms. So that is the importance of Sri Lanka in the context of uh, the global biodiversity. But the problem is, as always, there are threats. So uh, in any country, there are maybe threats to the biodiversity, but when it comes to Sri Lanka, uh, with the pressure that we have with sharing the, the small amount of land, and Sri Lanka is a country where we have very high density of human population as well. So now when we are managing this, we have to fulfill the requirement of this, uh, the population, human population, as well as the, we have to protect the biodiversity. If ignore the bio biodiversity, uh, there are direct and indirect impacts on the human population as well. So this is the problem. This is the challenge that we have. And there are some other uh, in, uh, threats, which is global. So when it comes to the global context, again, some threats are global. For example, climate change. So climate change is a contribution or accelerated by uh, almost most of the countries in the world. So, but still we are also suffering from that. So these type of global threats are there and also we have some, our own problems uh, especially the manage in the area that we have land use management and the pressure from the population rising population so when there are more people the habitats the natural habitats they are it supports many species are greatly threatened due to the illegal encroachments and the habitat destruction habitat dis, uh, degradation and as well as habitat fragmentation so for example if we think that there are uh, if you convert into another type of a land use uh, for us into a cropland, that is a habitat alteration. So this habitat alteration will alter all the species that can present in that ecosystem. And then sometimes if we build something, a road or whatever, across this uh, uh, forest, it will fragment into two different forest patterns, which will not support uh, that amount of species that it used to be. Okay, so uh, with that, the genetic 
uh, diversity will also uh, decline. So likewise, uh, because of these threats, we are under huge pressure and that has led to most of the species that we have to become threat. So the International Union for Conservation of Nature, the IUCN, they have categorized species uh, according to a different threatened levels like critically endangered, endangered, uh, vulnerable, near to likewise. So all these categories, if any species falls under any of these categories, we consider these species as threatened species. So likewise, 27% of the bird species, 66% of amphibians, 56% of mammals, 49% of freshwater fish, and 59% of uh, reptiles in Sri Lanka falls under these threatened categories. That means even though we have very high biodiversity, uh, even though we have high percentage of endemics, all of these are very much threatened. That means we have assets, we have all these threats, but they are under pressure. Okay, so this is where we come into the role, what we can do. So as a FEMA collection or berry, whatever, that we have to focus from our side, how we can contribute to protect uh, or address these issues. And the other thing is, uh, I think all of you know that Sri Lanka is a, a biodiversity hotspot. And uh, there was a question, how many hotspots in the world? So answer was 36. And out of the 36, Sri Lanka, along with the Western Guards of India, are categorized or identified as a biodiversity hotspot. And when it comes to the biodiversity hotspot or hotspots also, uh, the biodiversity hotspot means there are ways of biodiversity, there are biodiversity, but this biodiversity is threatened with destruction. Okay, biodiversity hotspot means not only having a good biodiversity, that means you have good biodiversity, but it is already threatened and it is under destruction. So that means we are in globally also as a, a biodiversity hotspot, we are in a, a representative one of the biodiversity a global hotspot. So that is our contribution to the global biodiversity and that is where we stand uh, in the global, in, in, the, in the context of global biodiversity. So uh, uh, when it comes to the biodiversity, uh, not like a developed country, not like an industrialized nation, still most of the people directly or indirectly depend on the uh, biodiversity for their survival, okay? So we are uh, mainly depending on agriculture and also uh, the tourism and other export crops. So all of these are resources that we extract from the biodiversity. So uh, for example, if we take most of the food that we uh, juice that, that we eat and uh, most of the medicine, most of the other uh, resources like fuel, wood, uh, and then uh, animal feed or whatever, they are the resources that we extract from the, uh, because of we are having a biodiversity. And on the other hand, the agriculture mainly depends on biodiversity, the uh, natural water that we have, the streams, lakes, ponds, or whatever the uh, sources of water are, protected because of this uh, biodiversity we, we have and the rainfall patterns, everything are regulated by the ecosystem because of this biodiversity. So all of this economy mainly depend on the biodiversity and then uh, if it is uh, affected, that will affect the livelihoods of the people and economy of the people and that will be a social economic, social economic problem. And the, on the other side, uh, when it comes to tourism, uh, most of the tourists that visit Sri Lanka, they come to admire our nature, okay? Because we have a very good uh, ecosystems, natural habitats where they can uh, uh, come and uh, visit. And also uh, within a very short period of time, they can visit uh, different types of uh, locations. They can get different types of experiences. So that is what we mainly market uh, here. Uh, we are not a country like which uh, uh, provides luxury tourism or whatever, we are uh, uh, marketing our resources, natural resources that we have, all the natural resources are the component of biodiversity, okay? So uh, again, when it comes to tourism, uh, it plays a major role. So we have to make sure how we can utilize this biodiversity in uh, in uh, our development, socioeconomic development as well, and where that is the point where we can 
practically address these issues. So uh, when it comes to global biodiversity issues, where we stay, uh, there are many global uh, issues related to biodiversity. From that, again, the illegal trafficking of wildlife and uh, conservation of migratory species are uh, two things that two points that I have selected to discuss today. Uh, for example, if we take pangolins, is a species uh, that are trafficked mostly throughout the world, and Sri Lanka is a key supplier of illegal pangolins. And when we, we come to shark fins, Sri Lanka is a key supplier, and mantari gills, Sri Lanka is a main supplier, one of the key suppliers, not the main supplier, one of the key suppliers, and then the start out is Sri Lanka again, Sri Lanka is a uh, key supply. So according to the CITES, that means uh, uh, convention, uh, which uh, many countries uh, agreed to uh, stop the illegal trade of uh, these type of endangered parts or animals of this endangered species. We are also a party and also we have very strong uh, uh, regulations, rules and regulations acts in Sri Lanka to protect all these things. But despite all these efforts, still uh, uh, these types of uh, illegal activities are happening. So the problem is very few are aware about these problems. And when it comes to the migratory species, uh, most of our, again, our tourism mostly depends on species like turtles, whales, and dolphins. There are many tourists coming to uh, watch dolphins, whales, and also turtles. So these are migratory species. And then uh, we can utilize these uh, species to, uh, uh, we have to protect these species because, for example, if you take turtles, uh, like uh, from seven species of turtles in the world, we have five, and most of them are endangered, or critically endangered. And then uh, most of these species are again under and recently due to the express uh, disaster or whatever, there are many uh, deaths of uh, turtles and uh, uh, these type of marine organisms. But every year, uh, same amount of less number of uh, these species are dying because of the uh, silent traps in the ocean, like the discarded uh, fishing gears. So this is a very big problem uh, when it comes to uh, the, these types of migratory species, protecting of migratory species. And also, uh, this is where we need the global cooperation because, for example, a net that is discarded in India can end up in Sri Lankan waters. So, uh, and it will, uh, it can kill species around our water. So, uh, these are something that uh, we cannot address uh, by ourselves. We need global cooperation. So, these are uh, the two of the global concerns when it comes to the protecting of. Uh, uh, the biodiversity in Sri Lanka. And uh, the other thing is when it comes to the illegal trade, it's very hard to uh, control because it is rela directly related with the, the social economic status of the locals. And then only option that we have, uh, one practical option that we have is converting this illegal trade in another type of source of income, so the same source, but converting it to, into another uh, way of uh, generating income. For example, instead of illegal trade of a, an endangered species, we can earn some money out of ecotourism by marketing that same species. Okay, And in Sri Lanka now, very recently, we have this type of tourism going on. And we are also promoting uh, this type of nature-based tourism activities. So uh, that is one major contributor to control these type of illegal activities. For example, uh, what matters the most, the dead pangolin or the living pangolin. Uh, while the uh, living pangolin can, uh, uh, like, will help many species to, many many families to uh, generate income. So that is uh, helpful to many families if we use that pangolin for, in a nature-based tourism perspective. But if it is a big, uh, dead pangolin, if it is used for illegal trade, uh, maybe one family and not even that family, the middleman will make the most profit out of that, and it is not sustainable. The next generations will suffer because there will be these pangolins will go extinct in the future. But if you use it in another way, uh, even their uh, next generations uh, will be able to uh, survive using that one pangolin. So likewise, what we have to do is we have to promote these type of activities, and we have to make aware of the local people, and we have to show that how we can, we can utilize these resources in a sustainable way. And in order to do that, we have started most of these activities uh, in our uh, 
uh, locations. So uh, uh, this is what I was explaining. The same resource, uh, same steel, but uh, different uh, perspectives, the way that we look at these uh, resources. So what we are doing and what we can do and uh, what we have done so far. So that's what I'm going to discuss from here after, uh, because as the Tema collection and uh, the uh, berry, we have realized these issues. We have uh, uh, planned how we can practically manage these uh, problems. So what we have done is we have planned preliminary surveys in all our Tema locations. So uh, we are doing a preliminary survey, what type of species that are present in these locations uh, within the uh, property, surrounding the property, and uh, uh, what type, uh, how many species are there, how many endemics are there, how many endangered species are there, and how these species can. So now most of the uh, our tourism are uh, focused only on some charismatic species like elephants, leopards, but still there are some endangered species and endemic species we can focus more on and we can make a market for that uh, for nature-based tourism and then we have trained many naturalists over the past few years so they are which is very important because uh, once we train them they have a major contribution towards uh, finding most of the information from these local uh, areas and then we allow them to do long-term surveys develop experience involved with get involved in research uh, enhance their capacity, building capacity. And then also we do some uh, education for the hotel staff and local people about the importance of our findings. So sometimes, even though they are from that area, they never realize that they are living in an area with this much of importance in aspects of biodiversity. So when we like conduct these type of activities and we educate these people, then they are also very much interested in getting involved in these things and also to protect these things because they know their survival depends directly or indirectly on these resources. And then uh, with our findings, we educate our guests and we uh, try to uh, convince them or influence them uh, about uh, the resources and biodiversity that we have uh, and uh, what is the importance of these things. And also, uh, the most important thing, we convey our findings, we uh, share our findings with the relevant stakeholders, experts uh, to come and uh, get involved in these activities. There are things that they can uh, uh, support. So uh, uh, I will go to uh, some of the findings, uh, which we have uh, done some of the surveys in different uh, four, uh, locations. For example, in Knuckles, we have uh, wild lamp in knuckles and so far from a survey uh, these species uh, this is not the uh, total number of species this is the species that are uh, concentrated on common species like birds butterfly identifies and uh, mammals fish these type of species and also uh, these are surveys only based on visual encounters we don't uh, do uh, we don't clear anywhere we don't do sampling we don't catch species or nothing else we just go to that location just walk in that location and we record only the species that we encounter from our naked type. So just from these type of surveys, we have like noted, noted there are like 138 species just within that uh, property. And also from that, like 46 are endemic. That means more than 33% are endemic to that uh, to Sri Lanka. And there's one point endemic. And uh, when it comes to the, the threatened species, there are four, uh, there are 10 critically endangered species, uh, 17 endangered species, and 20 vulnerable species, and 13 near threatened species. So this represents more than 50% of the species are threatened. So uh, that is the importance of these surveys that we have conducted. And then uh, when it comes to Galway, there are more than 240 species. From that, again, nearly 13% are endemics and two point endemics are there. And again, nearly altogether, uh, like uh, more than 20, uh, like 25 percent of the species are threatened that we found in this area. And when it comes to Vanda Ramnur, where we have the TN experience factory, again, uh, surrounding this hotel, we have found 136 species. More than 20 species percent of these species are endemics, and again, uh, more than 30 percent are threatened species. And then 
in Sigiri, where we have the Aliyavis of Park, again, we have nearly 200 species, of, uh, more, nearly 14 are endemics, and then again, uh, around 10% are uh, threatened species. So, uh, likewise, so just within these four locations, uh, we have completed the surveys, and uh, these are only visual encounters. Areas. There are many other taxons to be surveyed, but uh, only just within the main species that uh, if you go on a bird watching tour, if you go on and just uh, uh, walk with the naturalist, the species that you can see, the, that type of survey is this. This is not a, a full scientific survey. That with, Just within that type of a survey, we found this much of interesting information, this much of species, endemic species, and certain species. So now what we are doing is we are uh, conveying this message to the local people. We, teach them, we educate them the importance of the species that you have in their local areas and how we can utilize that in a sustainable way. And also the importance of protecting this, uh, uh, this biodiversity for this, uh, this area. And also we have uh, conducted through the Berry initiative, we have conducted uh, two naturalist programs for more than 25 uh, participants. And uh, this is totally like funded by Tema collection and then we conducted one in Sigri, one in Kandy, and uh, many undergraduates and young uh, students, young uh, youngsters, which are very interested about these areas uh, in, in this field, but have no experience joined with us. And now all of them are working in this field as naturalists or engaged in different types of uh, surveys, research, and or some other clubs and societies uh, in helping uh, with this type of activities. And then uh, so far, for our surveys, uh, we used we have given a chance for more than fifty researchers, fifty students, fifty uh, youngsters to engage in uh, these types of activities in surveys. So uh, they are not experts. What we have done is we train them and we allow them to learn uh, about nature by conducting surveys. So at the same time, they are also building up their capacity, experience, and they are also becoming. Uh, good experts in this field. So that's what we wanted to do. And also we have provided the uh, opportunity for uh, many uh, students, many uh, youngsters representing uh, many areas of the country and uh, representing different uh, groups, uh, different cultures for likewise uh, and uh, all the genders likewise. Uh, we have provided equal opportunity to all of them if they are interested in learning uh, or to become naturalists in future so they are uh, uh, there are many students there are many researchers which we have uh, produced and then also we do some activities in these areas and also uh, during this service we get the involvement of local people because then only they will uh, realize the importance of this <clears throat> and also some of them are now engaging uh, citizen science projects so uh, they uh, just observe things and they update these researchers. So uh, now uh, they get used to uh, different ways that they can contribute uh, towards these type of activities. And then uh, from all these uh, things, we have published more than 20 uh, scientific publications like two, two book chapters in <coughs> international uh, with international uh, publishers and one journal paper and uh, nearly 17 uh, conference and symposia presentations. So we have shared this information with the experts as well so that they can get involved, they can join with us and they can find this information uh, which can contribute in any way of protecting this biodiversity and promoting the nature-based tourism. Uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to share with you all. Uh, what is the uh, Sri Lanka's role in the global context of biodiversity, how, uh, why it is important and how it is threatened. And then uh, as Thema Collection uh, and as Berry Initiative, what we are doing, what we are trying to do to protect this, conserve this or manage this in a sustainable way. Uh, so thank you very much. So I want to, I would like to thank Mrs. Tamra Victor Singer, Charming Victor Singer, Maxim Victor Singer, for providing all this uh, support for all these students and the researchers, naturalists, local people, and also taking this initiative to protect and conserve this uh, natural resource for the future generations. And Professor Wanjakodi for uh, guiding us on most of these activities and uh, giving 
uh, mead uh, expertise and also all the staff members in all these hotels they are very supportive for all these activities and uh, they are always giving their 100 percent commitment towards these activities so they think they also have realized the importance of biodiversity and they also always support you to all these researchers and all these activities that they conduct and also the uh, students who involved in these activities because of them uh, only we were able to uh, do these type of surveys and find this much of interesting information so uh, thank you very much uh, once, uh, before i hand over back to jayani or ashan uh, i just want to tell you uh, connect with us and experience this uh, conservation expedition which is a very important thing to protect our local biodiversity for the country as well as which represents the global biodiversity where you can make an impact thank you very much thank you very much madhusha for sharing that valuable knowledge and insight with our participants today and we very much appreciate your support extended to thema collection projects Moving on, we have the Q&A session. So I can already see our participants have shared uh, many questions here. So to start off, the first question, what are the challenges in protecting Sri Lanka's biodiversity? Medusha, if you would like uh, to. Uh, yes, Tani, uh, uh, there are many challenges. So as I said, there are global challenges and uh, national challenges as well as locally, there are many challenges. So if I sum up all these challenges, uh, into a uh, few of these. One is uh, habitat alteration, habitat destruction, which is very political and which is very uh, sensitive thing because we cannot ask uh, people to stop their uh, only sources of income livelihood just to protect the biodiversity. So it's very challenging and uh, how we can manage this habitat alteration and uh, the spreading of invasive species, again, a lack of awareness of with the uh, communities that we have, the people, lack of awareness about the invasives is very challenging to uh, control these invasive species in Sri Lanka. And then the other biggest challenge is the population growth or the population density. Uh, we have a high density of, of people. So it's again, uh, providing them the necessary resources, not only food, all the other resources come from the environment. And also because of them, Many wastes are product produced, which is finally end up in the uh, environment, which leads to pollution and other activities. So this uh, human population pressure, and then uh, the overexploitation. So the other problem is the overexploitation again, uh, related with some uh, uh, livelihoods of the locals and uh, unsustainable extraction of these resources. These type of resources is another challenge because. Uh, Without a benefit, most of the time it's very hard to get the support of people uh, to control these issues, no matter how much, despite the rules and regulations that we have, despite all the other uh, uh, regulatory bodies or whatever we have. If the people or the uh, locals are not aware about that, if they do not have that conservation uh, uh, interest, it's very hard to uh, do any of these things. So, only thing that we can do is at least within like one generation at a total attitude change towards how we, they see at these resources and how they look at the biodiversity. I understand. So it's, it's like every day is a challenge. Every day you all have a new yes. challenge to face, I guess, when it comes to this. So due to the limited time, uh, strain, I will take another one more question. How would you encourage youth students to engage in protecting the biodiversity? In short, if you could give that answer for that. Mm, yes. Only thing is uh, now the most for anything, the influencing them. So you can use your social media, you can uh, show them how what you do in the field, how you engage in that and share your success stories. And uh, ultimately how much of uh, like uh, personal satisfaction you get by achieving these things uh, with your success stories. So you can become an uh, influencer with regard to uh, the conservation, uh, protecting biodiversity, protecting uh, these type of resources and promoting our biodiversity. So uh, that's the only way we can uh, influence the, uh, the uh, youth, especially the youth. I have seen uh, no matter how much we do lectures or subjects, they are only uh, mostly influenced by uh, the things or the success stories that are shared uh, with the communities that they are already involved in. Uh, that's for, for my point of view. 
And Ashan, uh, representing the youth, what would you have to say? How can we encourage more youth to this? So as Manish said, uh, again, once again, the youth, we should encourage, the, make it as a passion, like from young age, do the awareness creation and like do programs. For example, we do the like at our resorts, the bird identification, but butterfly identity contests, yeah, they get a certificate and so they get encouraged. So, and as Melissa said, youth are an important uh, recall factor in Sri Lanka and we, they should be encouraged and put on to the right track so that we could have a better future for the Sri Lanka and the biodiversity of the country. Right, thank you very much, Ashan, for that. So we do have a few more questions, but unfortunately we are running out of time. So we will be happy to answer these questions uh, some other time, most probably. And I would like to thank our incredible speakers once again today for joining with us, Mr. Medushi Gunavardhana and Ashan Karnananda. Thank you once again for taking your time and joining with us today. And that brings us into the Pema Talks webinar of today's session. I would like to thank all of our participants who joined with us today. And for more information on our sustainability journey, you can uh, log into our website, www.pemacollection.com and also visit our social media pages where we post regularly on our sustainability updates and you can get updates regarding the new sustainability projects that we do. Looking forward to seeing you in our next webinar. Thank you once again, everyone who joined with us today. Have a good day.